<laughs> this ain't good. Okay. You'll get used to me. If this ain't good, I hope the preaching's gonna be all right. <laughs> no pressure. Hey, <laughs> check your red light. You mean that one? Yeah, all right.
may I just go ahead and say I am so glad to be home. Those of you who don't know, I am a prodigal son of the great state of Tennessee. <laughs> Except I'm from where real Tennesseans are. I'm from the western side of the state. We're close to Memphis. We got a little more soul than the rest of you. <laughs> but I'm glad to be home. And folks, you know you're a homesick southern boy when you're working up at a diesel shop in Indiana. And as a joke, somebody plays Dixie, and you got to go back to the tire room to ball your eyes out. <laughs> you're homesick. So I'm going to get me a little Dixie fix while I'm down here, praise the Lord. Would you stand with me for the reading of the Word of God? Luke chapter 15, verse number 11, we'll begin. Brother Casey had asked me if I would be interested in sharing my testimony when I got down here for the camp, and uh, then it was suggested that I preach, and I thought, well, why not we just do both and come to find out someone had shared my testimony in Luke chapter 15. Beginning in verse 11. The Bible says, And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me, and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I've been looking forward to this for a couple months now, ever since this vision was hatched at this camp, and just to be a part of it is a wonderful thing for me. Just to be here and to, to see groundbreaking on this new territory, I thank you for that. Lord, I'm a man here standing in a place where I don't belong to do a job I'm not qualified to do to a people that could do better. But Lord, I'm the man of the hour now as you have designated. I ask that you fill me. Lord, I ask that my words that come forth from my mouth line up with Scripture 100%. If not, I ask that my mouth be stopped. And I ask that the people here be encouraged and that a blessing be received from your word, not because I'm the one standing here giving it, but Lord, because it is your word being given. And we give you all the praise and the thanks for it, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. I want to speak to you tonight on this subject of backsliding journey. And this is not just a message for those who, there may be some in this auditorium tonight, you may be living backslidden, and you're just a good actor, we don't know it, but there may be some also in this room tonight, you're considering a journey to the far country as this young man did. Well, I want to tell you a little bit about that journey because, like I said, Luke chapter 11, verses 11 through 19 is my testimony. I was a prodigal son, a preacher's son. I know about the journey to the far country. Young people, you'll do well to listen. And for those of you out there, parents, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, you've got a loved one that is backslidden now living in the far country. I'm living proof, standing before you right now, telling you it's all right. God can get their attention. Yes. God can bring them back. God can restore them. Don't worry about that broken heart in your family. God will fix it. Just give it over to him. Yeah. Weep not. He's going to take care of it. <laughs> but for those of you considering a journey into the far country, to say it's all right, I'm in control. May I remind you of something, and this is a quote that uh, that came to my mind when uh, 
Brother Tommy Miles and I were having a talk. And it is simply this. Sin is not as subtle as we are sometimes stupid. <laughs> yeah. Funny but true. Let me say that again. Sin is not as subtle as we are sometimes stupid. Let's think about this young man. He was living in his father's home, no doubt on his father's farm. And he had a good life. He had a good living. His father was setting up store for him. He didn't have the goods yet, but the goods were coming. Right. But because of his impatience, he said, I want what is mine now. I want to go to the far country. I want to experience life as people are telling it to me out there. Yeah. I want to go experience for myself. Dad, I don't care what you think. And what he said to his dad right here is, Dad, I wish you were dead. Yeah. Give me what's mine. Yeah, yeah. I wish you were dead. I want what is mine. I want to go to the far country. I want to see what the world has. No doubt he was excited about it. But here's the thing about the far country and the world. The lights of the world never shine on the hog pens that are in its borders. You see the skyscrapers. You see the music. You see the aircraft flying over and the fancy spotlights and the advertisements and everything else. What you don't see is the dark alleys. What you don't see are the broken men and women living yeah. back there. If they have a yeah. voice, if they can cry out enough, they can tell you, stay away. Right. Don't enter into these borders. Right. Don't come this far. Turn around. Go back to the farm, son. Yeah. Right. Come on. Go back to the farm. Yeah. Don't leave. It's true. The lights never show you. What's going on in the alleyways? Yeah. The lights never show you those dark, dirty rooms back in the rehab centers <clears throat> where that young man is shivering and where he's grinding his teeth and he'd give anything for one more fix. But he knows if he goes back and gets one more, that's his last one. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth. Death. Bringeth forth what? Death. 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 Yes, sir. So we see number one, verse 12. <laughs> and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. The choice had been made. I can recall the choice in my life. It was back in 2008, 2009, somewhere in there. I decided it was just time for me to leave Bible college. I had had enough of the rules. I had had enough of the restrictions, the regulations, all of it. Brother Casey was there. Brother Nathan was there. Miss Aaron wasn't there at the time, but she knew about it. I decided it was time for me to make my exit. I already had a plan. I already knew what I was going to do that first night I got out of Bible college. And I was excited. This was new territory for me. I heard my daddy preach about the world, but I was going to prove my daddy wrong. I was the exception. I was not going to get hooked. I was not going to fall. I know what the Bible says, but I know my way around. Yeah, help us. Can I tell you something, young person, if you're thinking about a journey into the far country, one foot in the world and one foot in the church is going to knock you flat on your hind quarters. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's and not only will it do that, it will cripple you. Yeah. Yes, sir. You're right. So the excitement of the journey, it was a new venture. I've got a new place to go. I've got things to see. Bright lights, big cities. It's all mine for the taking. There's thrills for the seeking. There was a new venture. It was a numbing vibe. No doubt, when I decided to leave Bible college, let me tell you, when I decided to leave, I still heard the voices. I heard the voice of a man by the name of Brother Tony Smith. A man who had lived a similar life. He had left the will of God, decided to live in the world. And I heard his voice say, don't go. Yeah. Remember those warnings from the book of Hebrews. Take heed. Yeah. I heard the voice of my father. Son, I lived in the world. Son, you're going to hurt yourself. Yeah. Don't go. But I was so numb yeah. Yeah. by that excitement. 
And by the thrill of what laid ahead, that those voices fade. My life was closed. I was never again on my knees in prayer. I was never again seen in church. If a preacher tried to talk to me or one of my Bible college professors, I would ignore him. I was just going to numb it out. I wasn't going to listen. So there was a new venture in the excitement of the journey. There was a numbing vibe and a naive victim. Before, this is going to take us right into our next point. Let me tell you about my second or third week. It was about like this young man's here. My second or third week, I'd had my first drink of alcohol. I messed with my first illegal substance. Didn't like it, didn't mess with it after that, thankfully. Did some other messing around and some doings I shouldn't have done. And after about the third week, I was thinking to myself, is this it? Yeah. Is this it? Is this all I've got to look forward to? I've got to go find the next thrill. That brings us to point number two. Point number one was the excitement of the journey in a backsliding journey. Point number three, the effect, or point number two, excuse me, the effect of the journey. Verse number 13. Pardon me a second. I don't need these, but I'm at the age where curiosity is greater than vanity. <laughs> Verse 13. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. So it wasn't long. It was time for new thrills. It was time for better thrills. And like this young man, I went to seek my better thrills. I went to seek my higher thrills. But my daddy always used to tell me, you cannot sow your wild oats and pray for a crop failure. Let me tell you, young person, if you sow to the flesh, you shall earn the flesh reap corruption. And what did I say a minute ago? When lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Read Proverbs chapter number 7. Don't take my word for it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Am I? I'm Preacher. just telling you what the book says. Yeah. Listen, right. I'm saying behind this pulpit and I've got this book open. You can count on one thing by God's grace. You will only hear from me what this book says. Amen. Yeah. Say, so Brother Robert, why is your personal testimony so important in this message? Because I look at Scripture now. As I look at Scripture now and I look back on my wasted late teens and my late my wasted 20s, I look and I see, oh, this thing's right. Yes, sir. This thing was written long before I did that. Yeah. yeah. Somebody knows something I don't know. Yes. Yeah. And I've got to tell some people that don't know. You don't want to go here. Yes, sir. You don't want to take this backsliding journey. We see in the effect of the journey, we see the season of sin. It says, not many days after the younger son gathered all together. I'm not accountable to anyone now. I've got the good stuff. Let's party it up. Let's have a good time. Verse number 13 again says he took his journey into a far country. Sin will leave you secluded. Right. Say, oh, but everybody else is having such a good time. Everybody's doing the same thing I am. And if you could look inside, they're feeling just as empty as you are, and they're looking yeah. at you thinking they don't have the answer either. Right. Uh, figure it out for yourself. Don't bring your problems to me. Don't you act like a friend to me. You don't have the answer I'm looking for. Just stay over there by yourself. You see, the season of sin, the seclusion of sin. Verse 13, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. The substance of sin is, what did he do with his substance in that verse? Wasted. Wasted. Waste. Yes, sir. Wasted years. Wasted years. Fifteen wasted years you're looking at right here, young people. Fifteen years in my 
my late teens, I walked away from Bible college. And not until my early 30s have I now come back. I've got 15 years to answer for when I stand before God. Pastor Kim was talking about this morning. He can take you to the spot where he went and accepted Christ. I can take you to the spot, the very same spot in Halls, Tennessee, where I knelt on December 28th of 1999 and accepted Christ as my Savior. And hey, I can do better than that. I can take you to the spot where four months later, in the town where I now live, in Hammond, Indiana, at the First Baptist Church of Hammond, I can take you to the balcony. I can take you to the very spot. I can take you to the very chair where the Holy Spirit, God, got a hold of a four-month-old spiritual baby and said, Hey, son, yeah. I want you to preach. Yeah. Sat there a couple more minutes. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, like, uh, like the old buzzard on Looney Tunes. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit came back again. The hound of heaven is not going to let loose of your tail. So yeah. you might as well turn around and give up while you can. Yeah. Right. It came again. Son, I want you to preach. No, no, no. After about 15 minutes sitting there in my seat struggling with myself, I surrendered. Five years later, I walked away and wasted 15 years. Young people, that was more than 20 years ago. And 15 of those years. Who could have been one to Christ yeah. that I didn't reach? Yeah. What else could have been done for Christ but I wanted to take my journey to the far country. Chains or change turns into chains. It's exciting for a little while, but the next thing you know, the change becomes chains. And when you've had those chains a little while, the chains of sin are too weak to be felt. Until they're too strong to be broken. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. I know what I'm talking about. Verse 14. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen in that country, and he sent him into, the, into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. So we saw the excitement of the journey in verse 11, or verse 12, excuse me. In verse 13, we saw the effect of the journey. Now we're looking at verse, point number three, verses 14 through 16, the emptiness of the journey. Next thing you know, you're on a lonely, deserted road. You don't know where it's going. You don't know what your next stop is. You don't even know if you've got your next thrill. And there's just empty, barren wasteland around you. How have I come this far? How did I get this far? What has happened to me? Right. Yeah. Right. The Bible says, and I believe it's 2 Peter chapter 1, it tells us of things we need to acquire. You're not going to find that on a backslidden journey. Because it says later on, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was first and from his own sins. Why? And on the emptiness of your journey, you experience loss. You've got the loss of fellowship with the Father. You've got the loss of the assurance of your salvation. Yeah. You've got the loss of the promises for those who live for God that are found in his word. You experience loss. Look at verse number 14. And when he had spent all. What do you mean when he had spent all? All right, let's break this down. His, he took from his father what was rightfully his. Lord, I'm, I'm going to take a journey to the far country now. But I want what's mine. Understand, I want what's mine. And here we are. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Assurance, y'all. 
wasted, spent. When thou walkest through the fire, I will be with thee. Though the waters overshadow me, I will comfort thee. God spent in right city. Everything that was promised him from his father spent in riotous living. Yeah. It was lost. Verse number 15. Or let, let's skip ahead to verse number 16. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. So you've lost your companionship with God. Now let's go find it in the world. Yeah. And all the more loss. All the more emptiness. Hey, Brother Rob, what are you talking about? Okay. Let's take another person's story. When I had reached the full emptiness of my journey, I was living in a rat hole town called Paragould, Arkansas. Many of you are from there. I'm sorry for calling it that, but that's what it is. <laughs> it was at one time the crack capital of the world. And I was living there. I had lost my vehicle. I had lost my job. I had no income coming into my house. My power had been shut off. My water had been shut off. I had no groceries. I was eating, but let's not say where my food came from. And one day, after walking around that rat hole town, trying to find work, and everybody said, I'm sorry, I'm not interested in hiring a no-account bum like you. That's the world's companionship, young people. Yep. You, yeah. you break away from God, and you shack up with the world, right. you better get ready to be left on your own. Yeah. That's right. right. That's, That's exactly right. Yes, sir. <laughs> I got tired of walking around looking for work. I went back to my house. And I had two things laid on the counter. I had a 45, and I had my Schofield Bible that my daddy gave me when I was 18. And I said, that Bible's not doing me no good. I've been reading it, I've got no food in my house. I've got no comfort or fellowship with God. I forgot about a little thing called repentance, but we'll get to that in a minute. The only thing that's gonna do me some good right now is this 45. And I, don't, I didn't want to tell you this story, but I'm just going to anyways. Just so you get the idea of how empty and high and dry the world's going to leave you. Yeah. I cocked it. Click. Something's wrong with it. I've had this 45 a while now. It's never failed me. Click. And you want to know how messed up I was by the world? I got mad at God. Yeah. What do you mean? What do you mean? You've taken everything else from me. Now you're taking this from me. You're taking away my own death. Why don't you come out here and fight me like a man? Did I mention I'm glad to be here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Welcome to the world, young yeah, people. That's right. Yeah. Welcome to the backsliding journey. Welcome to the far country. Not only will it mess with your spirit, not only will it mess with your fellowship with God, it will start to mess with your mind. Listen, right. Right. Yeah, that's right. right. Well. Tell the truth. Yeah. I put the 45 down. And it was like God had had enough of asking pity. He hit me upside the back of the head and said, hey, dummy. <laughs> why don't you put that 1911 down and pick up that 1611? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And folks, I am not lying to you. As sure as I'm standing here right now, as sure as breath is coming from my lungs, on the brink of insanity, on the edge of losing my mind, on the very brink of death, the Word of God, as I begin to open it up, and as I begin to read, and as I begin to slowly but surely, day by day, apply and obey, it pulled me back yeah. from the brink of insanity. It pulled me yeah. back from the jaws of death. And God said, that's it, son. Yeah, turn it around now. Which brings us to the next point. Yeah. We're talking about the emptiness of the journey. But when the world no longer satisfied, 
Let's talk about the exit of the journey. Verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? You see, here's what was going on while I was out in the world. I was down there in the hog pens and in the slurp eating that chunk, and God was saying, No, son, don't touch that. Son, don't eat that. Son, listen, I've got some yeah. bread here right for you. Yeah. Son, eat this bread. If you don't want bread, it's also bad. No, son, don't drink that muddy, dirty water. You don't know what the pigs and the hogs have been doing. Yeah. Son, get some right. clean Come water. On. No, son, don't eat that crap. Don't eat that slop. Yes. I've got something right here for you, son. Yeah. And I came to my senses. Like I told you a moment ago, I came to my senses. I put that on 45 down and I said, here it is. How many people do I know of that have had this good, sincere, strong bread of life and have helped themselves? I think I'm going to help myself to just a little bit. I think I'm going to help myself to just a little bit of peace. I'm going to help myself to just a little bit of happiness and a little bit of life and a little bit of passion and the Father. I'll back up and be started. Yeah, that's it. Where's the exit point you take? Yeah. got a child in the far country right now. I know it's heartbreaking. My wife and I do not have children, but folks, I understand the heartbreak. I've got a drug addict and an alcoholic for a dad. At one time, a Baptist pastor. And I one week. Before Miss Anna and I packed to come down here, I had to tell my father, I can't have anything to do with you till you get rid of this. Daddy, I love you, but I can't fellowship with you. Daddy, you know what to do. You are the one who taught me this book when I was a child. Daddy, you are the one who prayed with me when I knelt and surrendered my life to preach. Daddy, you know better. Yeah, come on. Don't think I don't understand a heartbreak. When I was on the phone with Brother Casey that evening. We couldn't even talk. I was crying so hard. But I have faith. Yeah. Because I have a loving father. Yes. I have a loving father who while I was out in the hall pins of the world, he was saying, son, yes. here, here's the bread. Son, come get some bread. Get out of the hall pins, son. And I finally turned around, walked down the hog pit and said, well, that's it for that. I mean, God, I know you told me to preach, but that's over now. I can't do that now. Too many people know what I've done. And he said, oh, you think I'm done? <laughs> <laughs> you think I just called you out of the hog pit? <laughs> Nathan, come here, buddy. Just stand right there for a moment. <clears throat> And I'm going to represent the Father every day. Yeah. Where's my son? Come on. Yeah. Son, I miss you. Son, I love you. Won't you come home? Yeah. And then comes that day. Some fathers would do this. Well, he knows where the front door is. He'd be better to use the back. Not my father. Son. Son. Oh, son. Yeah. Oh, son. Right. Oh, son. Oh, oh. Yeah. oh my son is home. My son is home. Oh. Son. Oh, son. Oh. It's been hard, hasn't it? Oh, so, uh, son, I don't think you ate the husks. I think you <laughs> ate the hog. <laughs> I had to do something to quit crying. <laughs> son, we, they were rough on you, weren't they, son? You didn't find what you were looking for, did you, son? Never. Well, listen here. Listen here. Hold on. 
Son, put my robe on. Son, put on my robe. Here. Son, take my watch. Here, son, I want you, son, put on my ring. Make sure I get that back. Yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Son, you're hungry, aren't you, son? Yes, sir. Get to the back 40, that big fat one. I want to kill, I want to dress, I want to roast it. We're having a brisket tonight. My son's home! Yeah. That's right. I fly. That's what was waiting for him. Yeah. Yeah. When he decided enough was enough. That was my greeting. When I decided I'd had enough, you see, by the time I came to the end of my journey to the far country, my daddy had already gotten off into the world and gotten into his junk. There was no happy earthly father waiting for me. But the father of my earthly father was happy that I came home. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, oh, you think you're done. <laughs> Son, I'm not only taking you out of the hog pen, I'm putting you behind the pulpit. Yeah. And I waited another three years. I said, God, there's just no way. There's just no way. That brings us to number five. Child of God, broken-hearted parent. Yes. The journey may have taken years. Come on. But the return is just a moment away. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Just turn around. Yes. God wasn't through. Yeah. Giving me a hard time to get my attention. You see, folks, I'm, I'm German on my father's side, or I'm sorry, Irish on my father's side, German on my mother's side. Don't pick a fight with me. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, June 25th, my grandmother of 87 years old died. I went to the funeral. This ain't was standing there when this took place. A, a dear preacher friend of mine, Brother Doug Walls, he came up to me, he said, Robert, I remember a time you used to get real excited when you preached. What happened to you? Mm -hmm. It's like God was standing there. <laughs> yes, sir. That's Have it. I got your attention yet, son? Yeah, it's okay. good. We went home that night. I went to work, didn't think nothing of it. Went to work, was working on some diesel rigs, didn't think a thing about it. <clears throat> went home. Yeah. And that brings us to verse number 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran. Yes, sir. Have you ever known God to run? <laughs> Is God afraid of anything? Nope. But I can tell you about a time when God ran. Yeah. yeah. When he saw me coming afar off, when I said, that's it, God, I've had enough. I'm not just standing by the exit anymore. You want me to preach, God? Here I come. Yeah. This is it. This is the end of the journey for yeah. me. No more running. No more excuses. And he said, hang on. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. Yeah. Yeah. 
Sin will leave you longer than you want to stay. And sin will cost you far more than you want to pay. But, turn around now. Just turn around. For parents, children, what can I do? Yes. Dear loved one with a broken heart, God has for you a word. Don't give up on your wayward one. Your prayers are not unheard. I too was once a wayward one. For righteousness I swerved. But someone prayed and says today your prayers are not unheard. God knows that you're grieving and your eyes with tears are blurred. What God's begun, he'll see it done. Your prayers are not unheard. When sorrow overwhelms you and your prayer by, slobs or, by sobs are slurred, the Holy Spirit will intercede. Your prayers are not unheard. If God must use his chastening rod for his will to be served, just trust our loving Father. Your prayers are not unheard. His hands are o'er the grassy fields. He sees the falling birds. To him your loved ones far more dear. Your prayers are not unheard. Whatever be the outcome, dear loved one, rest assured, our God knows best. In Him, take rest. Your prayers are not unheard. If you've got a wayward one out there in the far country, just keep praying. Just yes. keep loving them. Yes. How do I know they'll turn around? I don't know. I don't know if they will. I don't know if they won't. But I know I did. Yeah. I know God got my attention. And if He can get this big crowd's attention, I'm sure it shouldn't be too much of a challenge for him to get through to anyone else. Yeah. Brother Casey, if you can sing that song for me. Turn around. Your loving father is standing right behind you with arms wide open. If you've got a loved one that you've been praying for for some time, You've been worrying, you've been grieving. I want you to give it over to God tonight. Let go of it. Young person, if you're thinking that something better is on the other side of the fence, let me tell you why the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. There's a lot more mess in that grass that you don't want to stay. Yeah, it's true. Turn that over to God tonight. Make up your mind. You are not going to turn to the right hand or to the left. But you're going to stay faithful to God. Come on.
probably soon to be pot commercials on TV when it's yeah. legalized, which probably will be. The world keeps going the way that it is. Shows the fun and fury that yes, sir. the wrecked cars Let's and the bodies. Right. Amen. And, uh, I thank you. In case you're not fired. I'm grateful that he keeps us safe. Amen. Amen. I've been Amen. lost a thousand times. Yeah. 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 Amen. Were it not for the grace of God. Amen. 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 Well, I would ask you to stand with me. And, uh, in case he does good on that piano, he must have been taking lessons. Maybe. Uh, but I appreciate that song. But I'll tell you something. It's a chore to be able to say the old man's dead. It yes. is a chore yes. uh, to look back at your life. See, the devil keeps drumming up yeah. your past. Yeah. But uh, just remind him of his future when he does. Amen. That. Thank you for coming. I want to invite you to come if you can tomorrow morning at 10 30. I'm thinking it's open to everybody that will. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow night at 6 30, going to be plenty of preaching and uh, uh, plenty of fellowship. And, there's going to be food, too, uh, after the services, so you're welcome to come. You're welcome to come help prepare food. If you haven't signed up, I know it's several have. But uh, uh, I'm grateful. I, I preached that sermon, not that sermon, but I preached that, that text twice that I can remember. Once, my brother was alive, and he was there, and I didn't know he was going to be there, and he came rededicated his life to the Lord. Lived for him just for a short time, but I'm telling you, the hog pen, it may sound nasty, but it has a, an allurement to it that uh, if you've never been that way, you wouldn't know what I'm talking about. And then the, the first time, I guess I preached it, I was in Waycross, Georgia. Uh, and uh, that's a powerful, powerful, powerful uh, set of scriptures. Yes. So would you pray with me? We're going to receive our offering, just as always, as we go out the back door, uh, give big and uh, will be blessed by what God does here this week. I want to say this to the young people. Do you, do you have any friends? Any other people? Do you, uh, don't look back, Jesse. I say young people. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all in that? Well, Mary, she may fall by me. To the food one. But uh, <laughs> y'all need to invite some friends. Yeah. And buy some friends that don't know Christ. Yeah. That are bored sitting on playing video games, getting done yeah. with them and done with them. Yeah. Uh, no, just uh, and buy some friends. And uh, I believe there'll be enough gospel preaching here this week to yeah. uh, save some people. Yes. Uh, so it's it's your actually your jobs, and not my job, and yeah. every Christian's job to um, share and invite, to go and tell. That's what the Great Commission says, and to uh, invite people in. All right, our well, hearts and minds are clear. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for uh, that the prodigals even have hope. Yes. Lord, if we're yours, all that the Father hath given to the Lord Jesus, Scripture says, none are lost. Lord, I pray that you bless this week, that you will help us, dear God, to be revived. Lord, as I spoke to this man from Kentucky this morning, he said, I was revived this morning. That's what this is about. Mm -hmm. Renewal and revival and regeneration. Lord, we need them all. So help us and guide us. And Lord, we ask you most of all, let there be a prevailing spirit fall upon this place yes. so that there'll be people come to Christ, so that there'll be people that will get up out of the hog pen and say, yes. I don't have the palate for this slop anymore. Hey. I'm going back home. So God help us and guide us, and we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You are at liberty. Can't find the button.